Hello, welcome to the Morning Scramble. The talk continues. Thank you for joining us and being with us right here on AZTV. In the audience, uh, no, he's not in the audience. He's in the studio, but we have an audience in the studio today with us, Dr. Robert Rosenberg. He is a pulmonary and sleep medicine. That is what he represents. He is also medical director for Sleep Disorder Center of Prescott Valley. The topic is how we sleep. Now, how do we sleep? I don't know how I sleep because I am asleep. But we're going to talk about that and sleep disorders and how they can affect your health. Dr. Robert Rosenberg, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Prescott Valley and Flagstaff also, correct? Yes, we have a sleep center in Prescott Valley and a sleep center in Flagstaff. Doctor, <clears throat> why is it important that we know how we sleep? Well, it's important we know how long we sleep because lack of sleep results in heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. We know okay. that now. And obesity. Okay. So there's a definite relationship between them. Now, you've got, you yeah. must put this together for sure. me. Diabetes and obesity. Right. Give me that connection okay. on the sleep. Okay. When people sleep less than, on average, six and a half hours, and we're finding out that about 30% of Americans right now are sleeping less than six and a half hours, it results in the release of a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin stimulates appetite, and people who don't sleep enough have very high levels of this hormone and tend to consume more calories. Really? Especially, yes, especially carbohydrates. So there's a relationship, we feel, between the epidemic of obesity in the country and the epidemic of lack of sleep. And I'm not talking about insomnia. We're talking about something called behaviorally induced insufficient sleep, where you choose to burn the candle at both ends and not sleep enough. So okay. that's one problem. Yes. We also know lack of sleep results in insulin resistance. High cortisol levels during the night, which should be low, it's a stress hormone, produces blood sugar. It basically breaks down glycogen in the liver. Blood sugar gets high. And we know when people who have lack of sleep, there's actually a resistance to insulin being able to get into the cell and work. So well, as that's we another know, everyone problem. is different, obviously. Right. Not one size fits all. Sure. But what are the parameters? What's the minimum? What's the maximum? Okay, uh, seven hours to eight, of sleep. Very good. Seven to eight hours is probably on average what we so need. So minimum of seven you should Probably. Over six and a half at least. Under six and a half you do see a correlation between medical disorders um, and the lack of sleep. Well the obesity part is if I wake up in the middle of the night which uh, that's another question. Sure. Uh, waking up in the middle of the night, what is dangerous numbers and what is an average number? It comes down again to total sleep time. So if you wake up in the middle of the night for 10 minutes, 5 minutes, and a lot of us as we get older we sleep in lighter stages of sleep. But how many times? We may wake up uh, every time we go into a different stage of sleep which occurs every 90 minutes. Some people actually wake up for a short period of time as they flip through stages of sleep. But, uh, but in terms of dangerous, if you're up three or four hours a night, sleeping only four or five hours a night out of the eight or nine you're in bed, that's, in, that's insomnia. And then it needs to be, just, what you need to find out is why am I waking up? There may be reasons. It could be psychological, you could have sleep apnea, you could have some other sleep disorder. Well, unfortunately, when I wake up, I head for the kitchen. Okay. That's not good. No. You go, you go to eat. Of course. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say you have it, but a lot of people with sleep apnea wake up hungry and go to the kitchen. So they have what's called... Well, but many times room. when I go to the kitchen, I'm not even hungry. I just go to the kitchen and get something to eat. Okay, it's just a habit then, or soothing. Exactly. Yeah, you probably find the food soothing, and some foods actually will help you get back and to sleep. And it puts me right back to sleep. Uh, sleep apnea. Right. Let's describe it. Sleep apnea means you stop breathing in your sleep. We have 18 million Americans who have sleep apnea of which only 20% are diagnosed and treated. So basically your airway shuts down during sleep, literally you breathe in, your airway collapses on you, collapses for a minimum of 10 seconds or more, oxygen levels drop, carbon dioxide levels go up, and blood pressure may surge with each apnea as much as 40 or 50 points. Eventually it results in heart disease, a very high incidence of stroke, sleepiness and fatigue, because you're sleep deprived. Even now, you be aware of it. to describe the, uh, to diagnose this and accurately describe what is happening, you must, someone must monitor your sleep. You have to go to a sleep lab. There are home sleep testing. Okay. We do some portable testing as well. Um, it's not as good as home sleep, as in, in lab, uh, but it's adequate for screening. And of course, the gold standard is to come into a sleep laboratory and have your brain waves monitored, your breathing monitored, your oxygen monitored. It's all being monitored by a board certified technologist 
at my laboratory and on computer. And by the time the night's over, we'll know if you have sleep apnea. But or not. there is help for that. Oh, sure. Usually, if they sleep apnea is significant, we stop the test within the first hour or two if we've seen a lot of apneas, and we put the patient on a CPAP, which is a little machine that generates compressed air. You wear a mask. Could be a little nasal cannula looking mask. Mm -hmm, they're not mm -hmm. as obtrusive as people think. Okay. Actually, they're very unobtrusive nowadays. And the machine is then uh, calibrated by my technician. He slowly increases the pressure until your airway can no longer collapse and you no longer snore. The pressure splints oh. the airway open. No longer is there any blockage. Your oxygen levels come up to normal. Your blood pressure stops flaring in the middle of the night. And people have significant resolution of heart problems, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Significant drops. Uh, ADHD, particularly in children, although it can obviously sure. be in adults, uh, but ADHD in children, does that affect sleep? Should we be concerned? Most children with ADHD have sleep difficulties. They sleep less than normal. That's one thing. On an average, 45 minutes less, which can mean a lot. So a lack of sleep may be contributing to the inattention and the hyperactivity. The other thing that children with ADHD have in very high amounts is they have restless leg syndrome and they have sleep apnea in higher than usual amounts. And in some cases, if you treat the primary sleep disorder, such as the restless leg, or in one study when they treated children with ADHD for their sleep apnea, of that group, 50% of them a year later no longer were being treated for ADHD. The sleep apnea had basically presented as ADHD, which it can. Mm -hmm. People, kids mm -hmm. with ADHD, with, AD, with sleep apnea, tend not to be sleepy like adults. They tend to be hyperactive. They can't sit still. And bringing us to the question of uh, treating someone for sleep apnea with the device that you're talking about, is, uh, is that something that uh, for the rest of your life, do you, are you able to then sleep without it after a prolonged period of time? Great question. If you're morbidly obese, if you're a heavy alcoholic, if you have take medications that make sleep apnea worse, then there's a chance if you lose weight, stop drinking, you might get off the CPAP. Okay. But if you're an average person, a little bit overweight, you have significant sleep apnea, then right now in this day and age, with what we have available, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to shed the CPAP because sleep apnea doesn't suddenly go away. It's not like a common cold. It's a structural problem, and unless you do something to alter the structure, losing weight, have surgery, um, you're probably going to have the sleep apnea the rest of your life, and it's important to treat it because the incidence of heart attack, stroke, and even all causes of death are 15 to 20 percent higher in sleep apnea patients when followed well, for 10 years. Why does it change then in someone who loses weight or stops drinking? Well, or stop? yeah, excellent. Well, because alcohol actually weakens the upper airway muscles. Oh, okay. So alcohol can promote sleep apnea. Weight, obesity, makes sleep apnea much worse for two reasons. The deposition of fat inside the neck makes the airway much smaller. Oh. So if you have an obese patient who weighs 300 pounds and you look down with a scope, you'll see just reams and reams of fat. And there's no wonder that when they go to sleep, their airway collapses. So if they lose weight, either with diet or bariatric surgery, and by the way, the incidence of sleep apnea resolving after bariatric surgery is 65%. So that's the cure rate. But when they lose that weight, the fat from the neck goes away, and the fat in the abdomen that pushes the, the diaphragm up and makes the lungs, the volume smaller right, at night, right. that improves too and allows the airway to come down and to be firmer. We call it tethering. If nothing else, lack of sleep makes someone cranky during the day. Very much. You're so. just cranky and out of sorts. Right. You don't feel well. No, that's a symptom. one of the primary symptoms of insomnia is crankiness, irritability, I can't function, and that, and fatigue. Doctor, how do we find you? Well, uh, we're at the Sleep Disorder Center of Prescott Valley, and mm -hmm. we're at the Sleep Disorder Center of Flagstaff, so you can always call us there at 772-6422. And uh, I write a column every week in The Courier. Yes, so, you do. I, I'm so, glad they, you brought that up. And I they was give, going to. Yeah, yeah, on Sundays in the Vitality section, so you also see our address there. And if you have any questions for me, you can send it to my website, uh, AnswersForSleep.com, and we attempt to answer all sleep questions within 24 hours. Yes, and, and AnswersForSleep.com is right. the website where people can find out what we've talked about today and more. Oh yeah, much more. Okay, doctor, thank you. Nice. Thank you for being back. Thank you. Well